Good morning, everyone. We can start making our way inside. We're going to get started with our time of worship this morning. Sing hallelujah to the Lord. Sing hallelujah to the Lord. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to the Lord. Jesus is risen from the dead. Jesus is risen from the dead. Jesus is risen. Jesus is risen. Jesus is risen, Jesus is risen from the dead. Jesus is Lord of heaven and earth. Jesus is Lord of heaven and earth. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord, heaven and earth. So sing hallelujah to the Lord. Sing hallelujah to the Lord. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah to the Lord. We will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the Lamb. We will glorify the Lord of Lords, who is the great I Am. Lord Jehovah reigns in majesty. We will bow before His throne. We will worship Him in righteousness, we will worship Him alone. So hallelujah to the King of Kings, hallelujah to the Lamb, hallelujah to the Lord of Lords, who is the great. Once again, good morning, everyone. We're so glad to have you here with us, especially if you're a visitor. We're so glad you chose to worship with us here this morning. And then, of course, like we've said, we're now live streaming. So if you're live streaming with us, we're glad to hear from you as well. We'd love for whoever you are, wherever you happen to be worshiping with us this morning, be sure to connect with us. Let us know you're here. Fill out the attendance things on the end of the pews, the visitor cards. You can put those in the plates when they come around. Or you can check in on Facebook and all the different social media places that you may be more comfortable with. Now, obviously, as it says at the top of that, we want you to connect with us, not just letting us know you're here, but finding ways to be involved with us here at this congregation. And that's what, if you'll give a look through here, you'll find things like our Bible class times, all the different events coming up. And Jason Whitley is going to talk to us about two of those big events that are coming up next, well, the end of this week and the beginning of next week. We've got Walk for Water coming up on Saturday and then our ministry fair and potluck on next Sunday. He'll have more details on that. Now, yesterday we had our Easter egg hunt and we had quite a few kids. I think we had 50 people in total came. The kids all left with big baskets full of candy and they were very excited about that. But most importantly, it was a time of fellowship for people of all ages. We had, if you go to that next one, we had different people from the youngest, I don't have, I think somewhere in the middle of the big crowd of people, we had the youngest person that was there, just a little baby, and it was so cute, you know, watching him pick up eggs, and he just didn't want to let go, and mommy's shaking his hand, and he just, he's like, no, I've got my egg. So it was fun to watch them, and then of course, just at the time it was supposed to end, it was about 6.30, and you know, I just walked up to the moms that were all still sitting and talking, and I went, don't worry, we don't need to leave. You just talk. You know, no, it was really, it was great. They sat around and talked. We had kids jumping in the bouncy house until I think near seven o'clock or something. So it was a lot of fun for everyone. And we would love for you to find ways to be at those events because of course, the more people that are there, the more people in this congregation, you'll get a chance to know and introduce your friends to. So like I say, you'll hear more about a couple more events later on in service, but we're going to continue with our time of singing this morning. If you'll go ahead and stand. Dan's lesson is going to be talking about He is risen, since He is risen, and talk about how this amongst all Lord's days is truly the Lord's day. It's when He showed His power over death and meant so much to us. And so we're going to start with that declaration. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad. 
Jesus. 
Let's pray. What language can we borrow? Our Father, our God in heaven. What words can we use to express to you our deep love? To express to you the glory that you deserve from our hearts. You are an awesome God. Father, we are bowed and we are weak in your presence because of your mighty power. Father, we are so blessed to be gathered here today as your people. And we pray that this worship, as Jed has already started, brings you the honor and the glory that you deserve that we come to you with humble hearts, that we acknowledge you as the one and true and only living God, the God who always was and forever will be. Within your eternity, Father, there is all power, and you will be our judge one day. And we put our faith in that, Father, we know that you have provided a victory over death, even death on a cross. Your son has risen, and in him and in that, we put our faith. We confess your son, dear God, as our master. Thank you, Father, for the hope that we have through your son, for the hope that we have in your living word. Help us, Father, as we attempt to write that word on our hearts as we go about each day living your word and being examples to those among us, those that we are around, our family, our friends, strangers that are observing how we are conducting ourselves and that we will represent you well. Father, let us lift up our hearts as we continue through this worship this morning because you are worthy and your lamb is worthy. We see your throne room, Father, in that glorious sight as revealed through your word. Father, thank you so much for our ability to assemble here as your congregation, for its leadership. We pray for wisdom and your guidance upon our elders and the wonderful work that they do among us in being your leader servants and serving as our example on how to live. Father, we pray for our deacons and the ministries that they serve. We ask that you bless these ministries, especially the things that Jed mentioned just a few moments ago with regard to our ministry fair the walk for water, so many other things that are going on. And it's not for our benefit, Father, but it's for your benefit. And we pray that you will bless our efforts 
and that your name will be multiplied in this community and around the world. We pray for our missionaries, each one of them, and the ministries that they're involved in, that your word will be spread to those that need to hear it. Father, we thank you for the ministry staff here at Broadway. Thank you for Dan Owen. We love Dan so much. We don't glorify him as a man, but we hold him in high esteem and we, we lift him up to you, Father, that you will bless him as he humbly serves you, as he goes about spreading your word among us and among the world and becomes a teacher of preachers, continue to give him strength, physical strength and spiritual strength so that his work may be shown among us. Father, we pray for your continued blessings upon Jed and his family, upon Andy and Pam and their family, upon Jason Whitley and his family, and all of us as we work together, as we share in this ministry of the gospel. Uh, again, that your kingdom will be spread as you've asked us to do, as the whole mission of Jesus was to spread your kingdom among us. Like a mustard seed, let it grow to be the biggest tree, like yeast that goes throughout the dough. Father, may your kingdom spread among us. We have those, Father, that we love so deeply, that are sick, that are ailing physically, uh, that have suffered the loss of loved ones. We pray for your hand to be with Charles tomorrow as he goes through surgery. We, we pray for Jeanette. We pray for Lee's continued recovery, for Jim, for others that I'm not able to recall right now, but you know that we love them. We pray that your healing hand will be upon them. Father, there is no physician greater than you, and we place these in your hands. Father, we sin. We confess this to you. We ask that you forgive us. And by your word, we know that when we ask, you do answer those prayers, that you forget them. They're remembered no more. Help us, Father, to alleviate our guilt and our grief over that. It, it's so difficult to just put that behind us as humans. Even as Paul, such a great worker in your kingdom expressed, he was the chief among sinners. Father, we feel that same way from time to time, and we pray that you would give us the strength and the spiritual ability to just keep pressing forward down that path that you would have us to press on. Father, we love you and thank you so much for Jesus Christ. In him we put our faith. In him we continue this worship service. We lift up our arms to you, Father, in praise for all that you have done among us. May our hearts be right with you through your Son, we pray. Amen. <clears throat> we gaze not in the open tomb Where once I mangled body lay Nor saw the in that upper met thee on the open way, but we believe that angel said, why seek the living with the dead? But we believe that angel said, why seek the living with the dead? We walk not with chosen few who saw thee from the earth descend who raised to heaven their wandering view then low to earth all prostrate bed but we believe that human eyes beheld that journey to the skies but we that human eyes be
There's so many things, excuse me, <clears throat> that the apostles and the disciples were able to see with their own eyes. And through those actions, people believed that Jesus was the person he claimed to be. Now, the thing is, for us today, we don't have those actions and those visible representations of Christ to show to the people around us. And so at certain times, we proclaim things to each other to remind us and to strengthen our belief in those facts that way we can then leave this building and proclaim those things to the people around us. Dan's going to be talking about because Christ is risen. Since Christ is risen, there are things that we do. And none of those things involve just believing something and sitting alone and keeping them to ourselves. They all involve doing something about that belief. So let's proclaim to each other again the fact that we believe these things about Christ to strengthen our resolve to go out into the world. There in the ground his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain. Then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again. And as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its Try to find all bread. Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever block me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ. Good morning. Here we meet at the table again. Matthew 26, verse 31. Then Jesus told them, This very night you will fall away on the account of me. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter replied, even if all fall away, on account of you, I never will. I tell you the truth, Jesus answered, this very night, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. But Peter declared, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. Verse 69. Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus of Galilee, she said. But he denied it before them. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Then he went out into the gateway where another girl saw him and said to the people there, this fellow was with Jesus the Nazarene, of uh, Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again with an oath, I don't know the man. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, surely you are one of them for your accent gives you away. Then he began to call down curses on himself and he swore to them, I don't know the man. Immediately, a rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. 
How many times have we thought, I'm going to be better? I went forward, got in front of all those folks, said I was going to change my life, and I'm going to be better. And we fail. Miserably, we fail. You know, later on, when the word came to Peter that the tomb was empty, what did he do? He ran to the tomb, didn't he? Ran to the tomb, went in, saw the burial cloth there, but he really didn't know what to make of it. But he ran. You know, we run to the table today. We run to the table today for the fellowship that we have with each other, for the fellowship that we have in Christ, for the fellowship that we have with God. But I'm not sure if we really understand it all. I'm not sure if I can comprehend how much God loved us that he gave his son to die for us. I'm not sure that I comprehend how much he abhors sin that he gave his son to pay the price so we would be cleansed. I'm not sure, uh, no, I am for sure that I have no comprehension of what sinless perfection will feel like when we are in heaven. But I believe with all of my heart the, that we will obtain that. And the only way we obtain that is through what God has done for us through his son, Jesus Christ. If you are here today because you got invited by a friend or because it's a special Easter day and you look around at nice clothes or ties or sports jackets or whatever, and you have the misconception that you are around sinless perfection, that is not here. We are that through Jesus Christ. We are not that through our human lives. Let's go to our Father in heaven and pray. Father, we thank you so much for loving us. We thank you for your son, the example that he led for us, that he lived for us, Father, in loving you. We thank you, Father, for loving us. We thank you for this chance to gather around this table to be to partake of the Lord's Supper. And as we take of this low Father and represents our Savior's body, we pray, Father, that we indulge in that, Father. Accept that we are a part of that body, Father. Love you for it. Praise you for it, Father. And help us to understand it better. In our Lord and Savior's name we pray. Amen.
Father, as we partake of this fruit of the vine that represents our Savior's shed blood, Father, we're thankful for the forgiveness that comes with it, Father. I pray that we accept this forgiveness so that we can be strong in your kingdom, Father. Share this great joy that comes with being a child of yours. In your son's name we pray, amen. Jesus is Lord, my Redeemer, how he loves me, how I love him, he is risen, he is coming, Lord, come quick. We're also commanded to give, and we as humans sometimes, being humans, can always come up with different reasons or excuses or as we look around at each other and not really examine ourselves, we want to talk about others. And Peter did the same thing. You know, if you go on over into John where, you know, Jesus is like, hey, do you love me? Yeah, I love you. Ah, but do you love me? Yeah, I love you. Do you love me? You know I love you. You know, Jesus tells him to go feed his sheep. But then, just right after that, he's, you know, Jesus kind of predicts how that Peter will ultimately be led where he doesn't want to be led, and it's predicting his death, talking about you know, how he's going to die. And Peter being Peter, being human, you know, he looks at John, and he's you know, basically he's like, well, what about him? Hey, Jesus, what about him? Because that's what we want to do. You know, when, we're, when we're challenged to do something, we want to look, well, what about you? What about me? You know, we don't, we deflect things. That's human nature. And Jesus answered and said uh, in verse 22 in John 21, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. 
And that's ultimately the question that we have to ask ourselves when it comes to our giving. We all have different circumstances. I'm not standing before you saying we don't. But we still have the command to give. And universally, throughout the Bible, those that trusted God, those that followed his commands, followed his will, have and will receive the greatest reward that mankind will ever know. Home in heaven. Trust in God in our giving. Heavenly Father, we trust you, Father. We pray that we would be cheerful givers. We trust, Father, that, it will, that you will bless it, that mankind will profit from it. In your Son's name we pray. Amen. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, he who died, heaven's gates to open wide. He will wash away my sin, let his little child come in. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. All right, if you have kids ages two through six, now's the time that you can take them back to the time of children's worship. Head straight on back. Again, if you're a visitor, your children are more than welcome to join in. Follow one of the other parents who looks confident where they're going. And follow them. They'll guide you to the right place. <laughs> All right. So we've got one more song before our scripture and dance lesson this morning. And once again, it's going to be talking about these things that we believe, these things that we believe since we trust that Christ has risen. And then a question that we'll be answering is, what do we do with those truths? Let's stand as we sing this song. Jesus, you were all to me. Why did you die on Calvary? Oh, Lamb of God, I fail to see how this could be part of I 
Today's scripture reading is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 through 8. If you wish to follow along in a pew Bible, uh, there should be one, uh, well, if you're on the downstairs, there should be one on, in the, underneath the pew in front of you. And it's been a while since I've been on the balcony, but I think there will also be some on the, along those pews, along the sides. Excuse me. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for us, for, for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter, and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also, as to one abnormally born. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much, the guys that led us in worship. You did a wonderful job. It's a great day to be together. And also thank you very much to Roger and to Philip Barnett <clears throat> who stepped in and got our air conditioning going. It's getting cooler by the minute. And we appreciate every one of you being here this morning and uh, worshiping the Lord and encouraging us. All right. Did you know that there are three villages and the surrounding area in southern India in the province of Andhra Pradesh that's 50,000 Hindus that are getting clean water and not being poisoned by arsenic and mercury and everything because of this congregation and the money we have raised to drill those three wells in those three villages. 50,000 people are drinking clean water. <clears throat> Children are being saved. And the church is preaching the gospel to people and people are being saved. 2,000 baptized last year. 2,000 because of what we're doing. Walk, the number four, water.org. Even if you can't meet us at Wilson Stage at the Riverfront next Saturday and walk for water. We need you to donate. Go on there and register and donate money so we can continue to help our brother Mani Anand Pagadi Pali do the great work that's being done in India. Next Sunday, we're going to have a ministry fair. It's going to show off all the different ministries, several different ministries at Broadway. <clears throat> we're going to have a big get-together and potluck. It's actually going to be a potluck next Sunday. So we need everybody here, listen very carefully right now. We need you to cook food and bring food. Everybody. And we're going to have guests and visitors cook food, bring food, 
and we're going to be thrilled uh, to get together and have a great time. Let's enter into a word of prayer as we begin our lesson today. <clears throat> Father, you are a good and gracious God. We have so enjoyed praising your name because of your great redemptive work this morning, because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and your grace toward all of us. Father, you've been good to us. There are people among us who are suffering. We ask your gracious hand to be upon them. Father, we're so thankful Brother Lee Powell can be with us this morning. We're thankful for his progress. Please bless him and continue to strengthen him. Father, our sister Vivian Williams' mother is very aged and very ill right now. And we pray your hand to be upon her. We pray your mercy to be with her and with her family. Father, our brother John Panisi that we love so dearly is recovering from surgery. Please bless him. There are so many others, Father, that have sicknesses and <clears throat> struggles. We ask your kindness to be with all of them. Father, open our hearts this morning as we talk about your word. Help us to be blessed and leave here encouraged. We need you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, <clears throat> Today is the Lord's day. Now, I do mean that today is the first day of the week because in all of the Gospels at the end where it talks about the resurrection, it says it was very early in the morning on the first day of the week when Jesus rose from the dead. But today, the Sunday after the Passover, is the actual day. 1,988 years, give or take a year ago, on this exact same day. The tomb was found empty, and Jesus Christ broke open the gates of Hades and rose from the dead. And so when I look at my life <clears throat> through the door of that empty tomb and know that my Jesus Christ is risen, it changes everything for me. It changes who I am as a father because Christ is risen. It changes who I am as a husband because Christ has risen. It changes who I am as a man going around this community because Christ is risen. And Christ is coming. It changes everything. By one man came death into this world and by one man came the resurrection of the dead. 1 Corinthians 15, 21. Jesus once said to Martha, before he died and rose again, he looked at this grieving woman, grieving for her brother, and he said, Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Everyone who believes in me, even though he dies, he shall still live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this, he said. Well, she couldn't possibly understand what we understand because of the empty tomb. Jesus raised her brother to life and Jesus said, do not marvel at this. The time is coming when everyone in the tombs shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that are, uh, have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of condemnation. Inside of your little bulletin, you have an outline. It's on the back of this sheet right here. And you can follow along and fill in the blanks in the lesson. Write down some scriptures. That would be wonderful. Number one, very important to all of us. Since Christ is risen, we seek a living Lord. Now on that Sunday morning when Christ rose from the dead, very, very early when it was still dark, some women came to the tomb. And there were two men in white clothing that startled them. The Bible says in Luke 24, verse 5, that they were frightened and they bowed down their faces toward the ground. But those two men asked them a question. Why do you seek the living among the dead? He's not here. He is risen. You know, we sing a, a song that says, I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. We do not serve someone who lived a long time ago. We do not serve a corpse we do not serve someone who is gone like many of those that we have loved and are died and are no longer uh, alive at this moment in the world. We serve a living Savior. 
We serve the Word of God with a capital W. You know that it said in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. The book of Hebrews says, talking about the risen Jesus, the Word, capital W of God is living and powerful and sharper than a double-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of our soul and spirit, quick to discern every thought in our heart. All things are naked and vulnerable before his eyes. This living word with whom we have to do. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. Mary Magdalene on that next slide was weeping and crying at the tomb. She was so distraught when she came to the tomb and Jesus was not there. It never occurred to her that he could possibly be alive and there was someone standing behind her and she was just boohooing and weeping and crying and she said, if you'll just tell me where you've taken his body, I will take care of him. I'll do whatever is needed to be done. And in John chapter 20, Jesus said, Mary. And Mary turned around and saw that it was him and couldn't believe her eyes. And she just latched onto him with both hands. And he said, you're going to have to stop holding on to me. Because I have not yet ascended unto my Father. And in John 20 verse 18, she ran back to the disciples and she said these simple words. I have seen the Lord. He's not dead. He's alive. Those apostles saw Jesus over 40 different days. And in Acts 2 verse 32, they proclaimed on Pentecost, This Jesus did God raise up whereof we are all witnesses. He made purification for sin, says the book of Hebrews. And he sat down at the right hand of the throne of the majesty on high. When you go to Revelation chapter 1 verse 10, John is exiled on the island of Patmos on guess what day? The Lord's Day. What day is the Lord's Day, church? Sunday. And it was a resurrection day <clears throat> like today. And he hears this mighty voice behind him. And he turns around to see who's talking to him. And there's this figure with hair like wool and eyes of blazing fire. And out of his mouth coming a sharp double-edged sword and feet like brass. And he's walking among the lampstands, walking among his churches. Church, that's who we serve. That's the Lord Jesus Christ that rules over everything. That's the Lord Jesus Christ that lives right now, that works in my life and yours. We are not seeking a dead Savior. We are not serving a dead person. We're serving a living Lord. Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is risen. He's not in that tomb. He's alive and he's coming again. And for me and for you, that changes everything. Number two today. Since Christ is risen, we see God's plan foretold in the Holy Scriptures. <clears throat> you know, we have 39 books in this Bible that come before the book of Matthew. We call those books the Old Testament. And we look at those books in a certain way because of the risen Lord. Did you realize that in the New Testament church... The early Christians turned to those pages of the Old Testament and they preached to people Jesus out of the Old Testament. In Luke chapter 24, the risen Lord Jesus fell in beside two men that were walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus after his uh, resurrection. Luke 24 verse 17, listen. He asked them, what are you two discussing together as you walk along? Luke 24, 17. And they stood still, their faces were downcast. And one of them named Cleopas asked him, Are you only a visitor to Jerusalem? Do you not know the things that have happened here in these last days? What things? Jesus asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. And the chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death. And they crucified him. But we had hoped... That he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what's more, it's the third day since all this took place. And in addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but they didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. 
Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just like the women had said, but they did not see him. And Jesus said to him, on the, said to them on the next slide there, How foolish are you, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures about himself. Did you know that we would not understand the Old Testament scriptures, we would not see Christ in those Old Testament scriptures unless the risen Lord Jesus himself had explained those passages to us. In Luke 24 verse 44, listen to what Jesus said. These things I said to you, apostles, while I was yet with you, how that everything that is written about me... In the law and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And then he opened their minds that they might understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Christ had to suffer and rise again from the dead the third day. And that repentance and forgiveness of sins would be preached to his name among all the nations beginning at Jerusalem. Well, as Jesus walked with these two men on the road to Emmaus in Luke 24 verse 48 they approached a village the village of Emmaus and they urged Jesus not knowing that it was him stay with us for it's nearly evening the day's almost over so he went in to stay with those two men and when he was at the table he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and began to give it to them and then their eyes were opened and he disappeared from their sight and they recognized him and they ask each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures unto us? Our entire understanding of scripture is based on the explanations of the risen Lord Jesus. If Christ is risen, since Christ is risen, it changes everything. Even the way we look at Scripture, Christ is risen, and it does change everything. Number three today, since Christ is risen, we are compelled to believe. When I was a young man, I went through the same thing a lot of young people do. I wasn't positive I was going to believe all this stuff. And so I struggled with it for a while. And the thing that really brought me closure on the whole matter of believing or not believing was one thing. Guess what it was? It was the evidence for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You know, Mary Magdalene, she came to those other disciples and she said, I've seen the Lord. What must have been their reaction? Are you crazy? Have you lost your mind? A few days later, there were 10 disciples in a room and Jesus came to them and he appeared to them and showed them that he was alive. And then Thomas wasn't there with him and they said the same thing that Mary Magdalene said. They said, we have seen the Lord, and you know Thomas said, unless I see the prints of the nails in his hand and the wound in his side, I will never believe. About eight days later, the disciples were inside and Thomas was with them. And Jesus came while the doors were shut and stood in their midst and said, peace be unto you. Then said he to Thomas, Reach here your finger and feel my hands. And reach here your hand and put it into my side. And do not be faithless but believing. And that moment that Thomas put his hands on the risen Jesus. And stuck his fingers in the wounds. He fell to his knees and he said, my Lord and my God. And Jesus looked at him and said, Thomas. Because you have seen me, you have believed but blessed are all those who have not seen me and yet believe. In Acts chapter 1, when Luke was writing volume 2, and you know Luke, he writes Luke and it goes all the way up to the resurrection and ascension of Jesus and then he picks up with Acts. I want you to listen how Luke begins that book of Acts. I'm going to start with verse 1. The first book I wrote, O Theophilus, Concerning everything Jesus began to do and teach until the day that he was taken up for, to heaven. After he had given commandment by the Holy Spirit to those apostles whom he had chosen. 
To them he showed himself alive after his suffering by many convincing proofs. Appearing to them over a period of 40 days. Speaking to them the things concerning the kingdom of God. 40 days. This wasn't some momentary vision that someone could have misinterpreted that they might not be sure of later. 40 days at various times. The women at the tomb. Mary Magdalene. The ten by themselves. The ten plus Thomas. The two men on the road to Emmaus. Peter by himself. James by himself. 500 people at one time he appeared to. Saul of Tarsus. This was extensive. It was overwhelming. In John chapter 20 verse 29. Speaking to Thomas as we said a moment ago. Jesus said. Because you have seen me. Go to that next one for me, Brother Kenny. Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. That's us. And I'm telling you that the testimony of those people's lives, the fact that they were willing to suffer, the fact that they were determined at all costs to spread the message is enough to convince me that Jesus is risen and compel me to believe. Number four today. Since Christ is risen, we're challenged to make a serious commitment. Oh, folks, I, I hope you love being at church this morning. I hope you find good friends. I hope you find warm hugs. I hope you find encouragement. I hope you're blessed and you enjoyed being here this morning. But I want you to know without apology that we're about more than just showing up at church once in a while. I want you to know that if you really accept the risen Lord Jesus... Jesus wants more. He wants a commitment. You know, he called those men from their fishing nets in the first place. And they were pretty excited about some misconceptions they had of Jesus. And he said, you come after me and I'm going to make you fishers of men. Well, you know, as Kelvin did so well, you know, Peter denies Jesus three times. Jesus won't fight for the revolution like Peter wants him to. Uh, Jesus is crucified. Peter's nowhere to be found. Peter, after the resurrection, isn't sure what's going on. So he gets the other apostles and he says, Look, one thing I know is how to fish. Let's go back to fishing. So they went back to fishing for fish. And they fished all night and they didn't catch anything. And in John 21, a shadowy figure early on the dawn appeared by the side of the Sea of Galilee. And he was standing over there in the fog and he says, throw your nets out on the other side. Well, they'd been throwing them out and pulling them in all night. But they decided, okay, this is weird. So they did and they caught this massive net full of fish. John says there were 153 whoppers in this net. So much so they could barely pull the net. Peter jumps in the water. He swims to shore. They decide it's Jesus. They all pull the fish up onto the beach. And here they are stinking of fish and dripping. And they've been there all night. And here's Jesus living alive. Standing there on the beach. Cooking breakfast for them. And he looks at Peter. And he looks at the pile of fish. In John 21 verse 15. And he says Simon. You're looking at this pile of fish. Do you love me more than these? Oh God, you know I love you. Jesus, you know I love you. The word love that Simon uses is a lesser word. Really, you should translate that something like, Lord, you know I like you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. <clears throat> Do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, you know I like you. Peter says, or Jesus says, tend my sheep, feed my lambs. Do something, Peter. I need you to work for me. <clears throat> He wanted Peter to be a fisher of men. A few days later, in Luke chapter 24, verse 48, Jesus is standing there and on, at Bethany, and he is looking up to heaven, and he's telling his disciples that you're going to start preaching for me in Jerusalem. You're going to go and wait for the Holy Spirit. And they watched him ascend into the clouds. On the day of Pentecost in Jerusalem, the Spirit came, and empowered by that Spirit, Peter and the twelve, Peter and the eleven, Preached the gospel and they never looked back. Peter's whole life changed. He made a commitment. They committed themselves to Jesus. What have you been doing? I don't know what you do every day. Peter knew fishing. He fished. What do you do? 
But whatever you do, I don't know what it is. Jesus wants you to look at your whole life. And he's asking you, not about a pile of fish, but about whatever it is with you. Do you love me more than these? And he wants you to do something about it. He wants you to commit your life to him. Follow me, he said. I'm not talking about John, Peter. I'm talking about you. Number five, very closely related. Since Christ is risen, we are compelled to live a new life. Casual Christianity is the order of the day. Casual, weekend, watered down, secularized Christianity is the order of the day. We don't have time for that, anything that serious. We don't want a whole huge go- dose of God in our life. We want a little bitty convenient spot over there, maybe on the weekend for Jesus. Saul of Tarsus had everything going. Saul of Tarsus was schooled in the best Jewish schools at the feet of Gamaliel, the great Tanaitic rabbi whose teachings are in the Mishnah. I mean, he was a leader. He rose in Judaism until he was on the Sanhedrin court, for goodness sake. Everybody saw him and knew his name when he passed by. He was dedicated to stamping Christianity off the face of the earth because he thought it was the right thing to do. His whole life was going in this direction. And then one day on the road to Damascus, a blinding light hit him in the face. He fell to the ground and he looked up and saw the risen, living Lord Jesus. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus of Nazareth whom you are persecuting. Now get up and go to the city and it will be told you what you are supposed to do. For three days, blind, fasting, not eating anything, he waited and thought about his whole life. How could I have been so wrong about everything? The whole trajectory of his life changed that day. And Ananias came and told him from the scriptures the good news about Jesus and said, get up and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. And Saul of Tarsus did and he never looked back. He changed the whole direction of his life. Later on to the Galatians, he sat down and wrote, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live but Christ who lives in me and the life that I now live in the flesh I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me to the Corinthians he wrote this we judge that one died for all and therefore all died and one died for all so that those that live might no longer live for themselves but for him who for their sakes died and rose again Folks, since Christ is risen, everything has changed. I got one more scripture for you this morning. 1 Corinthians 15, and I'm going to start with verse 3. Paul said, I delivered unto you of first importance that which also I received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised from the dead the third day, according to the scriptures, that he appeared unto Cephas and then to the 12. And then he appeared unto 500 brothers at once of whom uh, the, uh, some have perished, but the greater part remain until now. Then he appeared to James and then he appeared to the rest of the apostles and last of all, as unto a child born out of due time, he appeared to me. Also, Saul of Tarsus spent his life and his death serving the Lord Jesus Christ. One of the greatest turnarounds of a life in all history because Jesus Christ is risen. Folks, because Jesus is risen, it changes what I'm going to do this week. It changes what you're going to do. It changes your relationship to your family. It changes how you spend your money. It changes everything. It's the good news of the gospel, the redemptive work of God. It's a wonderful message. It's a wonderful day. It's the Lord's day today. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. It's a great day. 
If we can help you in any way, we hope you'll come in a moment as we stand. We uh, have a couple of elders that'll be here if you need to pray about something. We urge you to come. We're so glad you're here. Let's stand and praise the Lord. I know that my Redeemer lives and ever prays for me. I know eternal life He gives from sin and sorrow free. I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know, I know eternal life He gives. I Wow. Good morning. Thank you, Brother Dan, for that excellent lesson. Just to helps us uh, and reminds us that Jesus Christ has, in fact, risen. And we celebrate that every Lord's Day, but specifically on Easter. And we're glad that everybody is here. I'm very, very thankful for this church. I'm very, very thankful for this family. And I'm very, very thankful for the opportunities that God has given me and my family to worship here and to serve here. And I'm very excited for the opportunities that Broadway has to offer for all of us. We have a lot going on, as many of you know. If you look into the bulletin, you'll see that it is just chock full of different activities. Specifically, we're going to be having, as Dan mentioned, so I won't say much more about it, the uh, ministry fair and a potluck. I do want you to remember that it is a potluck, so please be cooking and cook and bring a lot of food for yourself and enough for yourself and for others. Uh, bring dishes of all kinds, meat types and all, all sorts, and just want everybody to know that there is a way and an opportunity for you to get involved at Broadway. Uh, you might be looking, what talents do I have? What abilities do I have? We have an opportunity for you to get plugged in at Broadway and to serve God and serve this community. And we're going to highlight just nine of the many ministries that we have next Sunday. So I encourage everybody to come out for that. Speaking of ways to get involved, we have our Walk for Water. Again, uh, Dan brought it up again. We've got these water jugs here. We've got the sign-up table. We've got excellent opportunities for you to get involved in that, to, uh, to come out and walk, to register, get online. We're about to close. Uh, would you consider closing our service out with a prayer? Yes, sir. Okay, if you can do that. You're cutting in and out, but just give, it, give, it, give us a shot. Let's pray. Yes, sir. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Um, thank you, gracious Heavenly Father, for everything you do in our lives. And especially, Father, for the opportunity to to be uh, to be together here uh, through this for the blessing of this media, for the blessing of this technology that enables us to uh, join our hearts and lift up our voice in prayer for you, Father. Thank you, Father, for Broadway, and thank you for you blessed us with in 
and spreading your kingdom here in India. Father, we we pray that uh, you'll be with the, the Broadway leaders as to represent you and the, the lead the congregation on your behalf. And um, we pray that uh, you'll be with them, especially Father, for pray for Brother Dan and uh, his health. I pray that um, you'll continue to use him for your work. Thank you so much, Father, for blessing our lives, blessing the work and the church with him, with his teaching. We're also, Father, thankful. That, uh, we're so thankful, Father, that you did for the Lee Powell to be at the worship this morning. Uh, we continue to pray, Father, for his recovery, and uh, we're so thankful for, for the for the strength that uh, enabled. Thank you so much, Father, for everything you do, especially Father for the for the opportunity to call you Father for everything you have done, Father, to your Son for each one of us here. Uh, without him, we would not be. Love you, Father. Thank you so much for the price of sacrifice, for for lifting it from the grave, and uh, so that we can serve you with him, not a dead. We thank you, Father, for him, and we pray. Amen. 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 You're dismissed. <laughs>